All right, welcome back. Today we're going over the muscle contraction cycle. Your skeletal muscles have the ability to contract. There are two things that are really involved in the contraction. Those are neurons and muscles, right? Shocker, right? So the first general step is the signal travels down the neuron from the brain to signal the muscle to contract. The second step is the muscle releases calcium onto the myofibril, which is something we talked in last video. And the third step is the interaction between actin and myosin is what really causes the contraction. And that would be like basically the next video because I'm going to go more in depth between the interactions on actin and myosin. So let's start with the first step. So right here is the neuron. The first thing is that the action potential arrives at the neuron, rather the synaptic terminal. This causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open and calcium rushes in. This should look familiar because I've already made, it, already made a video on this, and I go the in-depth processes of everything. So I'm going to quickly just briefly go over this. I will link the video into the, you know, into the description. This influx of calcium causes acetylcholine receptors, rather the vesicles, to exocytose, and acetylcholine binds to acetylcholine receptors onto the muscle. So this section here is the muscle, and this is the neuron. When the acetylcholine binds the receptors, this causes an influx of sodium into the muscle. And then just really quickly, the acetylcholine binds off and is broken up by acetylcholine esterase and essentially recycled. So all of this is basically a review. If you need more of a, you know, of a more in-depth explanation, I suggest you check out my other video on this. All right. So now we're on to here, which looks, I know, I know it looks really big and shocking and confusing, but we're going to go over it step by step. So now we're looking just at the muscle, no neurons here, just the muscle. So we have acetylcholine and it binds to the receptors here. This causes sodium influx. So the sodium channels open, voltage gated sodium channels open, and sodium goes, rushes into the cell. When sodium ro rushes in, the voltage goes up, right? Because sodium is positively charged. The voltage goes up. That's step one. Step two is in response to the voltage, there's something called a DHP receptor. The DHP receptor is very sensitive to voltage. So what's going to happen is, well, first, notice the DHP receptor. It has this ball and chain kind of deal here. So what actually happens is this chain is actually connected to another receptor. This is called the ryanodine receptor, or RIR. Now, this ranodine receptor is actually attached to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is just a fancy word of saying, way of saying endoplasmic reticulum. Since it's just part of the muscle cell, they decided to rename it to sarcoplasmic reticulum. It's the exact same thing as endoplasmic reticulum, just a rename or rebrand. The sarcoplasmic reticulum holds calcium inside. It's a calcium storage center. Okay, so what actually happens is when the voltage goes up, it signals to the DHP receptor, it gets basically gets excited. And the DHP receptor gets excited and pulls on the ranodin receptor, right? Because of the ball and chain kind of deal here, the chain. It pulls on the chain. And it opens up the ranodin receptor. So when it opens up, calcium rushes out. That's literally what happens is calcium rushes out of the end of the circle positive reticulum. At the same time, so you're probably wondering is when it rushes out, how does it actually get back in? The, how does the calcium go back in the circle positive reticulum? There's something called the circa pump. It's this thing right here. All it literally does, it, it just takes calcium and it shoves it back inside to the circle positive reticulum. So it's called the circa pump. All right, so calcium is basically sprinkled on 
to something called tropomyosin. Now, this tropomyosin is something we're going to go over in the next video because there's, there's a whole thing about it. But the gist of it is that there's basically binding spots on actin. The binding spots on actin are covered up by something called tropomyosin. And what usually happens is when you want a contraction to happen, the myosin, there's myosin, the so myosin, the, the thick filament myosin, actually has myosin heads on it. It's these things. And they're basically able to bind onto actin. And what happens is the, tro the myosin heads pull actin. But the problem is that the binding sites for the myosin heads are covered up by something called tropomyosin. So how do you expect myosin to actually bind to actin? Well, because of the tropomyosin, it's blocking it. Well, what actually happens is the calcium sprinkles on and it makes tropomyosin excited. And it basically moves tropomyosin out of the way so it exposes binding sites for actin and myosin, for rather, sorry, exposes binding sites for myosin. So myosin can actually bind to actin. That's what's going on here. And that whole situation with actin and myosin, I want to go over really in depth in the next video. But all of, you know, just for this video, I need you to understand that there's a sodium influx, which causes voltage to go up, which signals or excites the DHP receptor to pull on the ranodine receptor, which causes calcium to leave the sarcoplasm reticulum. That's all you need to know for this video. I want to make it clear for the next video between actin and myosin. So if you found that confusing, don't even worry about it. So here I just summed it up here. So the first step is sodium influx into the muscle, causes voltage to go up. That's step one. Step two is the DHP receptor responds to the voltage by pulling on the ranodine receptor located on the sarcoplasm reticulum. Next, the calcium leaves the sarcoplasm reticulum and enters the sarcoplasm. So this area, this yellow area, is called the sarcoplasm. That's basically like the cytoplasm, but it's called sarcoplasm because it's the muscle cell. They try to make your lives more difficult. At the same time, the circo pump is replenishing the calcium into the sarcoplasm. So the, after the calcium is used up, essentially, it just goes back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum through the circo pump. And then so it's calcium that is re really sprinkles onto tropomyosin. That's it. So that's all you need to know. So just a re really quick, we'll just do it again. The sodium rushes in because of acetylcholine receptors are activated or binded. The voltage goes up. DHP receptor is sensitive to the voltage. And since the voltage is up, it pulls on the ranodine receptor. And then calcium leaves the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it basically sprinkles on the myosin. And at the same time, the calcium re-enters the sarcoplasm reticulum through the circo pump. And that is it. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, which next video we're gonna go over the, the interaction between actin, myosin, troponin, and tropomyosin. So don't even worry about it. All right, later.